All right, so I recently watched a video from Default Cube where he made an effect something similar to like this, right? And it got me thinking if I can make a similar effect but using geometry nodes. So if you guys have not watched that video, he, he basically made it using textures. And uh, it's a pretty amazing video. And uh, Default Cube, if you are watching, I love your videos and a huge shout out to you. And uh, yeah, I'm going to link that video down in the description. I'll encourage you guys to go ahead and check that out. And uh, yeah, uh, the conclusion of uh, this intro is that I did figure it out. So I want to share it with you guys. So yeah, uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. A quick note before we start, uh, to follow along with this tutorial, you guys are going to need to download Blender 3.0 and uh, it's uh, available in a stable version now on Blender's official website. So the link for that, I'll put that down in the description. Just don't forget to download that because the geometry nodes are different. So it's, it will be kind of confusing if you're actually using the old one. To begin with, we have this our default scene here. We're going to delete our camera and oops and our light let's hop into the geometry nodes editor because the entire structure that we're going to build is going to be procedural right so click on geometry nodes and over here i'm going to click on new so i end up with this geometry input and geometry output nodes right so now we are not going to use this default cube though so i'm going to go ahead and disconnect that and let's do a shift a and add a grid now grid is nothing but a plane with extra vertices to just see what we are doing right uh, we're gonna go ahead and add a point distribute node we are not gonna use it later on though so we'll just remove it later on but uh, i'm just adding it so that we can visualize what's happening with our mesh and also i want to change uh, the size of the grid to about four meters make it a little bit bigger and also let's add about 50 vertices here we have our setup ready now let's start visualizing uh, our structure so the very first thing that I'll add is a position node this is because uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, identify the center of, of this grid right and the best way to do that is with the position node. so it defines the position of the object now this next thing that we'll add in here is a vector math node so vector math and what we'll do is we'll calculate the distance of each of these points from the center of the object so let's change this from add to distance and let's quickly go ahead and add the position here what we can also do is uh, we can add a set position node what we are going to use this for is to use these node structure that we're going to uh, create here and i'm going to use these to displace the points on on the mesh right and we use uh, the set position node to do that so we're going to take the distance and add it to the offset now as soon as i do that it's just gives us something really weird but now you can see that each of these uh, are getting displaced right from the center of the object right so that's what we want now as soon as we have that the next node that we're going to add is a math node let's add a vector math so uh, the difference between the tutorial that uh, default cube made and uh, the one that i'm making is is that he was working with textures so uh a normal math node worked there but since we're working with vectors here or, or basically the position of the object we're gonna use vector math heavily let's add a vector math node here and uh, i'm going to go ahead and change this to sign right so we're calculating the sign of our object now let's duplicate that and let's add another vector math node but it would be right before the sign right and let's change it to multiply now why did i do that so basically multiply is gonna go ahead and help me create these waves right so the higher the value that i add here the more waves are gonna be created or the more circles are gonna be created here so i'll keep this value to somewhere around eight now we need something to animate this waves right that we created so i'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this node once again and let's add it right before the sign node and change it from multiply to add right so now this add works as an offset for uh, our our waves basically and uh, yeah we can just basically animate this value here and though you might have noticed that i'm only adding values in the z axis right because if i add values in other axes as well it's just gonna displace it in a really weird way which again now that i look at it it's a pretty cool uh, effect but uh, that's not what we are going for right now so uh, let's bring them back to zeros the next thing that i'll do is i'll just animate this value so for that we can just simply add a driver uh, we can type hashtag 
frame and as soon as i do that now if i play it's just going to change this value depending on which frame in the timeline it's at right now so we don't want it this fast though so let's divide it by let's say i'm going to divide it by 20. so now the effect is really slow and it's, it looks really nice but it's it's going inwards but i, I and I want it to go outwards instead, right? So what we'll do is we'll go at the start of this driver and just add a minus in there. So minus inverts the value. And yeah, basically now we have this interesting looking effect that's going outwards. This in itself is an amazing effect as for me. So you guys can use it if, if you're just happy with what you have right now. But uh, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more detail to it, right? So let's go ahead and add a Voronoi texture in here. The next thing I'll do is I'll add a vector math node again and i'll take this position value and add it in the bottom section of my vector math node and the original position for uh, our mesh is going to go in the top now we'll change the add to sub subtract and we'll take this value and add it to the bottom of our distance value now as soon as i do that something weird comes up right now as you can see uh this again I, I just love each and every effect that it can create in this entire thing right so this is this looks amazing in itself already but let's add a little bit more clamping values in this right so for that what we'll do is we will go ahead and add a map range and let's take this value and put it right in the value of this and we're gonna invert the fall off of this right and let's take that and uh, let's duplicate the sign and let's change this to multiply and just add the map range in the bottom section of of this now as soon as i do that can you see this effect is now limited to only this section and when it gets closer to the outwards of uh, our uh, uh, mesh it, it automatically uh, makes it uh, zero right or makes the effect negligible around that so we can again change this value and have a better effect we can also change the fall off so if i change it to 0 0.02 can you see it's now affecting almost the entire mesh so you can play with these values and uh, just like come up with something that you think is a reasonable option now that we have our setup ready we're going to go ahead and remove this point distribute node and i'm just going to work with the mesh itself it's giving us a subtle effect already but it's not something that i'm looking for so i'm going to go ahead and add a subdivision surface node here right and uh, let's bring the crease all the way up to one and let's increase the subdivision value to three now as soon as i do that can you see it's already creating an amazing effect for me it's already building a city like structure for me right so that's that's what i'm basically looking for but it's only affecting this area and i want a little bit more so if i want to create an, an entire city and this is where we go a little bit different from the tutorial is that we're going to add a color ramp right before the distance node and the map range node let's do that and let's change this from linear to please spline and as soon as i do that can you see that it's already affecting the entire mesh right and uh, i can just bring down the subdivision level a little bit lower just so that uh, i can see what's happening so it's basically creating these waves and it's gonna have this uh, higher buildings at the center and the lower ones at the at the end right you can even make this uh, effect a little bit better by changing the map range from linear to smoother step and uh, yeah now you can see that it's giving you a little bit better fall off right now again you can play with this depending on what you like i will you can even go with linear if you want to now i'll bring this black portion closer to the white one now what it does is basically it gives me higher buildings uh, at the center right so if i bring it back the buildings go a little bit lower but if i want to exaggerate that effect i'm going to bring it a little bit closer to the white section okay so let's bring up the subdivision surface once again now we've got a structure ready but it doesn't look like a building at all so what we can do is we can quickly switch to render preview mode and let's build up our material for it let's go to the shading tab and even though there is a material it's not showing up so for since uh, Blender 3.0 has a different geometry node setup altogether. Just to make sure that there is a material that's affecting your mesh, you need to add 
a set material node. So this tells Blender as to which material it's supposed to look at for this mesh, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, our default material in there just to make sure that it's affecting our mesh. And uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll add a mix shader in here. So we'll keep our principal BSDF as it is, and I'm gonna add a mix shader in between the material output and the principal BSDF. And let's make sure we put it in the bottom. Then the next thing we'll add is an emission texture. And let's put it in the top. Just gonna make sure that I enable ambient inclusion bloom, screen space reflections, and I always like to increase the contrast to high contrast, right? Just it makes the look a little bit more better. So uh, once we have that, the last thing that we'll add is a layer weight node. So we'll take the facing section of the layer weight node and add it to the uh, to the factor of of the mix shader. Let's add a color ramp before that so that we can control how layer weight is affecting it. Let's bring down the color so that we know where exactly this is the effect, right? Let's try and bring it down. Actually, the effect is, is flipped. So let's flip it over. And so what, what I basically want is I want to create windows in here, right? This is what I want, basically. The white should be at the right sec uh, section and the black should be at the left part of it. Let's do Shift A again and add a Voronoi texture in here and let's take the distance value and add it to the blend of our layer, layer weight node okay let's increase the value here so can you see it's, it's almost giving us a window like structure now right again this this effect is really subtle and uh, i don't want that i want a little bit more uh, bring it closer i'll duplicate my color ramp and then uh, it's basically uh, go ahead and bring the black closer to the white once again right so now the effects there but it's not looking that great so let's change it to minowski i guess that's what i went with okay now it looks like stars i don't want that so let's bring this down okay just make sure that uh, you do a you add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node and just make sure it's looking at the object coordinate and not uh, and not the generated one because uh, that might affect how it looks now let's bring up the scale up to 70. What we're also going to do is uh, we're going to add color to it, right? So for that, I'm going to add a geometry node here. And I need this position value of that to define my color. So I'm going to also add a color ramp at this position value here and just add this to uh, the emission. And let's bring up the emission to 10. Okay, so one thing that I did wrong is that uh, we don't have to connect it from distance to blend. We have to connect it from color to blend right and uh, now it's showing the windows um, so yeah sorry about that and uh, as soon as you do that you just bring the white closer to the black and now you can see that there are windows in uh, in our city and that's great uh, so let's come down here uh, for the geometry node we're going to add a color ramp and let's add a few colors in here right so i'll add a little bit of a bluish color then uh, let's go with a bit of an orangish for the center uh, again, you can play with it, add uh, the colors that you like in this section. And the last one that I'm probably going to go with is slightly greenish. And uh, yeah, it's this, uh, the city just looks amazing. Now, this effect works with both Cycles and EV, right? Uh, but the original video that you saw was rendered in Cycles. Uh, and not in EV, so uh, it depends on you. Uh, so EV is going to give you a little bit faster rendering. Uh, cycles might take time, but cycle again is a little bit more realistic uh, to go with. So uh, I'll leave that choice up to you guys. As far as the lighting goes, I'll leave that up to you as well because different lighting can give you different results, right? So uh, that's about it for the video. I really hope that this was helpful and you guys liked it. If you do, uh, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.